some people blow their dog whistles more than motorists hit the horn in downtown Manhattan. For Top Gun Dog trainer Ricky Maloney, whistling your dogs is a language. The whistle, I think, is an overused uh, tool in the dog trainer's, uh, dog trainer's armory. What I've got is I've got a stop whistle, which is one long blow. I've got a recall whistle, which is a series of peep peeps. When I'm working the Spaniel, I've got a turn whistle. So when the Spaniel goes so far, I just give him a, a little gentle peep peep, a lot softer peep peep, to turn him and hunt him back towards me. I only increase volume over distance. If the dog's trained on the whistle, when I'm working a dog close by, should be more than enough. When I've got the dog a long way out, then I increase volume. If the dog's not listening to that soft whistle at that distance, you can blow as hard as you want, it's not going to, it's not going to listen to you. What I do before I even introduce the whistle is I, I make sure that the dog understands my verbal commands. So when I start introducing the stop whistle, the dog already knows sit. So as the dog sits at the side of me and I say sit, the dog's already started to sit, I blow my stop whistle. What I also do as well is when I'm actually training the dog to go back, or to go left or to go right, I blow a stop whistle when the dog sat looking at me. Because what that stop whistle means is if you look at me, I'm going to give you command. It's more positive than throwing a dummy for a dog, sending the dog for the dummy and then trying to stop it halfway. So that stop whistle is actually a positive because the dog knows after that stop whistle it's going to get a command to get the reward, i.e. the dummy. Ricky Maloney runs Ribblesdale Labradors. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk.